Okay, welcome back. Now we're going to talk about finding your ground speed from your true airspeed. Okay, now let's say we were planning a flight again from Ellington over to Galveston. All right, well, we have already figured out what our direction is. We have already figured out what our distance is. Now, we've already established that our true airspeed is 125 knots. And we basically got that by getting our calibrated speed and running it through our E6B based on our air temperature. Now we have to figure out what our ground speed is. And you figure, and your ground speed is simply your true airspeed corrected for winds. Um, so that's just something important to remember. So, okay, in this particular path, let's just say that we are going from Houston over to Galveston right here. So let's just go ahead and pop up our little E6B. Well, first we have to figure out what our winds are. So let's go over to the winds aloft forecast and we'll see that our winds are 050 at 15 knots. So what we can go ahead and do is our basically 050 at 15. All right, so we'll go back to our E6B and here are our directions. Now most of our E6Bs are going to have the instructions written on them, but let me just go ahead and explain some of the points to it. Um, this little index right here, this little line is known as your true index. And basically your true index is kind of like the, I wouldn't say it's the demarcation point, but it's kind of like the um, like the, the, the information point. It's just basically your point of measurement where all your numbers are going to be based off of. Your sliding part of your E6B um, is going to rotate to indicate what you need it to indicate, basically indicate directions or where you're headed or where the winds head from, and then the entire slider is going to slide. And so to indicate, um, you know, so you can go ahead and run your measurements. And of course, you have your bar on the back, which is just a series of numbers to kind of help you out. So, okay, so we're just going to go ahead and set it right there. Because the first thing you want to do is zero out your E6B over where it says 100. Now what it says, it's going to say set your wind direction under your true index. So our wind direction, as we know from our winds aloft, is going to be 050. So we're going to go back to our E6B. Excuse me. We're going to go back to our E6B and we're going to do that if I can find it. Okay, so 050. So all you're going to do is take your little E6B and rotate it to 050. Okay, and there we go, 050. Next, you're going to mark your wind velocity up from the center point. Now, all they mean about that is you're going to use these as your wind velocity marks. Now, of course, our wind isn't going 100 knots. But what you want to do in cases of this is you want to just chop off your first digit. So your 100 is going to be your 0. Your 110 is going to be your 10. Your 120 is going to be 20 knots. 130 is going to be 30 knots. 140 is going to be 40 knots. So all you got to do is you want to mark it up 0, 10, 15. Right there. So you have your 0, 050 0 at 115 knots. Or excuse me, 15 knots. Then what you're going to do is set your true course under the true index. And your true course, of course, being your um, initially, well, you know, for purposes of this, you can either set up your, <coughs> excuse me, you want to put your true course in, which is essentially your um, initially marks route on the map. So you can go to that, to that and you'll see it's 143 degrees so we'll go ahead and do that so 143 so you'll spin your little E6B to 143 degrees hang on let me go ahead and get this 143 okay next what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide your wind velocity mark up to your true airspeed we already know what our true airspeed is, so we'll just go ahead and slide it up. And when it says mark your slide your wind velocity mark, they just mean this little red mark that you made. As you spun the scale, it moved, so then you just want to slide it up to your mark. So 125 knots is our true airspeed. Finally, oh, what happened? Sorry, the uh, thing is kind of sensitive sometimes. 
All right, so 125. All right, so last but not least, the directions say is your ground speed run, reads under the center. So your ground speed in this case is going to read right under there. So it's 130, 140, 135, 136, uh, 135, 136, 137. 137 knots is our ground speed. And our wind correction is going to read off to the left. So all you do is you just count your little tick marks. So that's 5 degrees and that's 10 degrees. So what you got is you got 1, 2, 3, 4. We'll call it 4. 4 degrees left correction. And basically it's going to say, let me see, for your wind correction angle, you subtract to your left and you add to your right. So if it's to the left, you subtract. If it's to the right, you add. Um, So you just want to make sure, and that does get kind of confusing, but um, the way I think about it is it's the opposite of your variation. You can think of how east is least and west is best. Well, when it comes to your wind correction angle, the opposite is true. If it's to the right, you add, and if it's to the left, you subtract. So in this case, we'll subtract 4 degrees correction off of our heading to correct for our winds, and we'll add that to our true course. So there you go, and that is how you figure out your wind correction angle.